Do you have to create projections or want to find out how much values need to be in order to meet a target? The tools I'm going to show you are really great. Um, I have used them myself within my own business as well as for client work. Uh, when I've needed to find out how many courses I need to hold in each office, this is a really great tool to use. Now as a bonus, at the end, I'm going to show you another great tool for creating a way to show the different what ifs on a spreadsheet. So if you're doing projections, you might have different scenarios. And this tool I actually have used in uh, meetings on, very, on, on a lot of different occasions. And normally I get at least one person coming up to me going, wow, how did you do that? So the first tool we're going to look at is called Goal Seek. Now this takes one value and it changes it in order to make another cell reach a specific value. In this spreadsheet, I have one social media account, uh, which has the, the current number of followers and the average uh, weekly increase in this case of 12. And then I've calculated how much that will increase over four weeks if I increase by that 12. I have calculations in each and they're based on B4 and C4. If I use the uh, shortcut key of control with the single uh, tick, that's the accent key, which on my keyboard is the top left uh, button above the tab, this shows us the calculations and you can see that all the calculations use C4. And then I'm just going to use that shortcut key to hide those calculations again. So what I'd like to find out is how many followers do I actually need in order to reach 900 in a month. So the bonus tool at the end is what I would do before doing this. So I'm just going to copy the row and paste so I don't actually lose my original values. Goal seek is how I'm going to find out how many followers I need. So go to the data menu or the data tab, then select what if analysis and within that select goal seek. There are three options. So you want to set the cell that you want to calculate. In this case, we want the week four to calculate to 900. So I've added the two value uh, to 900. Then we have the third option of the changing cell. In this case, I want to know how many followers each week. So it's all based on C4, the weekly increase of followers. Now I just click on OK. The answer will show, but you'll see that the original values were overwritten. Now if I cancel this, they'll go back to the original values, but clicking OK will overwrite them. So either skip to the end or watch to find out how to keep all the values without having to copy the row like I just did. So if you're finding this video informative, interesting, or useful, please do press that like button. So now that tool, Goal Seek, was great, but what happens if I have a lot of values and I want to change them, like in this next spreadsheet? I have a few social media accounts and it has calculations. Now I could use that shortcut key again, or I can go to the formulas tab and select show formulas. You can see that all the calculations use the weekly increase column and the total adds the week up. Okay, all of which are dependent on column C, the weekly increase column. 
The feature we're going to use is not currently, or it's not available when you first install Excel, but you can add this in. You need to go into File, Options, Add-ins, and then the Manage, okay, Manage Add-ins. Make sure that it says Excel Add-ins and then click on Go. Now within this, you just tick Solver Add-in, which I've already done, and then you click on OK. You do wanna make sure you're online when you do this. Then Solver will be added to the Data tab. So it just goes to the end and it says Solver. So if I select that, a pop-up will appear. This one has a few more options than Goal C. The set objective is the cell that you want to find a specific amount for. Now it's a calculation rather than a static number. In this case, it's the overall total for week four. Now you can ask Excel to calculate it to the maximum it could be, the minimum, or a specific value. I'm going to set mine to a, a specific value of 6,000. Whereas for Goal Seek, I could only have one changing cell, this one I can actually have multiple changing cells. So I'm going to select the weekly increases, uh, those, all of them. The changing cells should be static cells rather than calculations because it's going to uh, change those. Now the problem we have is that if we just click on solve, it will increase the uh, weekly increase amounts to, to the maximum it could be to reach the target, uh, which means that it will change those to decimal places. Unfortunately, I don't want decimal places because you can't increase followers by a decimal, like by 0.2. So this is where the constraints come in. I'm going to add one to specifically that the weekly increase must be integers, that's non-decimals. If you're going to use um, integers, those need to be the cells that you've specified in the previous window as the, as the changing cells. Now you can have multiple constraints. For example, if you only want to increase the maximum amount to a specific amount for say, I don't know, I think I can only get five TikTok followers max in a week, you can actually set that as the maximum for that cell within the constraints. Just so that you can see what it looks like, I'm going to add a constraint that the cells actually need to be greater than zero. In this case, it will work without, but I just want you to see how to add a second constraint in. The only trick is that once you've added the last constraint, you click on OK rather than Add, because Add asks you to enter more constraints. All the constraints now are listed in the box and you can load and save these so you can use them on other spreadsheets. You can also uh, change, delete, and reset all clears everything as if you haven't used this. So if you really make a mistake and you just wanna get rid of everything, you can reset all. There is a tick box for making the unconstrained variables non-negatives. This can be unticked that is, if you want them to be negative. If you want, you can use the drop down to select a solving method. Now, I suggest leaving this as it is, but if you don't like how Excel used Solver to get the answer, you can change this to see if it actually makes a difference, okay? Then you click on Solve and the values will change. You can, you can choose to keep solver, uh, those are the solver values, or restore the original values. 
Now, like with Goal Seek, this changes the values. So I'm going to actually restore the original values. The great feature that's actually embedded into this is to save it as a scenario. Scenarios are saved values within spreadsheets for the same cell. So you can say multiple values for one cell. Now it's a great feature for creating different options for a spreadsheet. First, I'm gonna save the scenario, give it a name, then click on OK. Now I'm just going to restore the original values. And so this is the bonus for the video. Scenarios are fantastic. Uh, when I'm creating what if or projection spreadsheets, this is an easy tool that actually gives me huge impact in meetings, but it doesn't take me a lot of time to set up. So once your spreadsheet is set up with the base or normal values, you start before you use goal seek scenarios or start changing values, you save them as a scenario. So you click on data what if analysis, and then the scenario manager. Now you can see I've already added the normal values, but to add another, you click on add, type the name, then you select the cells that are non-calculated fields. So in this case, the changing cells I'm using are the ones that the calculations are based on, C4 to C8. And you can also add comments to just describe why you're adding this in. Maybe um, like for the normal or default values I put in, this is the standard or default values. If it's the, the best case, I'll put in why, how did I come up with that, that's it. Then you click on OK. Clicking on add will allow you to add more, but once you've added all those that you want, you just click on okay and it returns you back. And you can select a scenario at the top and then click on the show button at the bottom to just update the spreadsheets with those values. This is why we always put normal or base values in so you can always return to those um, whenever you need to. Now, if you have multiple spreadsheets that are the same, say every year or every month you do the same projections, you can use the merge button to import the scenarios from other spreadsheets. And the part I love for meetings is once I've shown a few scenarios, so I might go into a meeting and use the um, show, so click on it, use the show. Once I've done that, I can actually click on summary and I can select more than one cell. If I select, you can see column G values as my result cells, and then the scenario summary, and then I just click on OK. Now, what it does is it shows the cell names as absolute values. That's the, um, the cell reference with the dollar signs in front of each part. But as you can see on two of them, I actually rename them um, using cell names and it uses those cell names rather than the absolute references. You can then format it or leave it. It also adds in groupings. Uh, that's the plus sign at the top. Now let me know in the comments if you'd like a video showing more about scenarios and how they work. And if you found this video useful, interesting, or informative, please do like. And if you'd like to see more videos or encourage me to continue, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye.